something uh, randomly different that interests me. People, friends of mine know I'm a big architecture junkie. Um, I'm doing a lot of work in the Fedora ARM space. Um, anything involving exciting, very different architectures tends to excite me. Um, so, you know, non x86, that's, 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 that's a cool space for me. Um, all right, so tile, tile architecture, hands up here if you've ever heard of tile before. Okay. Yeah, on, on, right, at the beginning of the week, right, some of you guys heard it. Okay, so, um, so Tile, brief history of, uh, of, uh, of, of the company Tilera that make Tile as well. Uh, this is a company co-founded by uh, an MIT professor by the name Anant Agarwal. Those of you who uh, subscribe to or follow the MIT Open Courseware material will have seen some of his lectures on there on electrical engineering. Very, very good professor of computer science. Also happened to found something called the MIT Alewife project back in the, the early 90s. What they did was <laughs> they went, they said, look, we want to play around with highly scalable multiprocessor systems. And the way we're going to do this most effectively is not to completely redesign a microprocessor from scratch because that takes time and money, um, neither of which are necessarily abundant when you're in academia. So what they did was they went to Sun and LSI. I don't exactly know how that collaboration happened, but it's pretty cool that it did. And Sun basically, as, as, you, as some of you may know, they, they're, they're, the Spark architecture that they started um, is, is kind of an open standard in some ways in that other people can implement the, uh, the Spark architecture. So what they did was they said to Sun, okay, we need to add a few features to Spark for you know, academic purposes. And they created something called Sparkle, uh, which, uh, or Spark LE. Um, and Sparkle um, is, is basically a Sun processor, uh, a Spark processor, but it's been modified to do very fast context switching. Um, and this is, this is in the 90s, right? So 14 cycle context switches in the early 90s. Um, and what Sparkle would do that was interesting was it would, uh, it would context switch, it would switch from one task to another on all kinds of events, even like a cash miss. Okay, switch to something else, right? Well, that cash miss gets fixed up and then I'll come back and do what I was doing before. Um, and they also um, sort of paved the way and trailblazed uh, massively cache coherent multiprocessing. So they had 512 processing nodes and each node had one of these chips in it, right? In the early 90s. Okay, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, the main thing is it's just very, very, very trivial for this processor to very rapidly switch between tasks if the CPU is busy doing, doing a, you know, fixing up a, a handling a cache coherency issue between multiple processors in the background. So, fast forward. Um, what happens is uh, Anant uh, and some other guys uh, decide to basically license a lot of the technology they developed. Um, found a company called Tylera um, in the, uh, I guess, uh, five, six years ago now, maybe slightly more than that. Um, and what their first chip uh, was the Tile 64. And what it does is implement between 16 and 64 uh, cores on a single chip. Uh, each core is a full, uh, full processor. It has L1, L2 cache. Um, it's a Harvard architecture split uh, ID cache. Um, it, it did come from Massachusetts after all. Um, and um, what, what effectively they do is create mass mesh networks on a single chip, right? So in the, in the 64 core implementation there, you have an eight by eight matrix of processors uh, connected together in this mesh. Um, and then they implement basically mesh networking between these different tiles. So it's taking those concepts that you have developed with the Spark processor and expanding those out uh, and doing that all on one single chip. Um, they do some interesting things with this. They have something called hard wall partitioning. So they can take an eight by eight tile processors. Um, bear in mind, these are typically sub gigahertz, but in aggregate, you're looking at huge numbers of, uh, 
operations. <coughs> when when the, the first chip came out, it was you know, 35 times more powerful than pretty much anything else on the market per chip, right? So it's, it's, the scalability is amazing there, um, and hence very useful in, in, in all kinds of industries like uh, you know, packet snooping. If you're a government agency, right, and you really want to process a lot of packets per second, apparently they're very interested in this stuff. Um, anyway, so hardware lets people partition sub areas of the chip. You say I've got my eight by eight matrix, but I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to take a four by four chunk of that, and I'm going to say this is running Linux, and then the rest of it might be doing something else, right? So you can partition out the cores and assign different uh, uh, kind of virtual machines to them if you like. Um, in fact, it does have a hypervisor. It's a hypervisor-based system, so you can run Linux on a subset of these cores that link together in, 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 in rectangular tiles, or the whole tile if you really want to go there as well. Um, other things they do, again, extending the Sparkle concept, they do um, a virtual level three cache. So there's no, uh, there's no actual level three cache on this per se, but any tile can uh, collaborate with other tiles to effectively snoop its caches and build what in aggregate is a, is a much larger um, what appears to be a much larger level three cache. More recently than this, uh, in the last year or so, Tilera have announced Tile GX, which is a 64-bit version of Tile. Um, this has between 16 and 100 tiles on a single chip. They bumped the L1 to 32K, they bumped the level two to 256K, and in aggregate, the level three can be up to 26 megabytes per chip, right, which is pretty exciting. Um, the architecture's pretty clean, modern 64-bit architecture. It's got 64 general purpose registers. Uh, zero to 55 are normal registers. Uh, John might find it interesting that some of the, pro some of the registers are, have special purposes, like networking and so forth. Uh, so you have a mesh of different tiles that communicate together. And then you have some shared resources on the chip, like memory controllers, network interfaces, and so forth, right? So some of the network control can be done um, on individual tiles. Yeah? So the, the, the GPIs are per core? Yeah. Okay. Each one's effectively an independent core. Yeah. So the mesh connection, mm -hmm. is that a single packet bus? Or are there multiple paths when you partition? Are there multiple? It's effectively a hypercube. It's effectively a hypercube. It's not quite. Um, it, 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 it does, for the benefit of the, the time we have, yeah, it's, it's basically a hypercube. Uh, if you think in terms of hypercube. No, it's not, there's no bus. There's no bus. It's a true mesh. It's a true mesh. It's packetized. Um, it uses splits. It does. It uses uh, wormhole proofing, actually. Um, breaks packets down into 128 bytes or less chunks. Um, and that's what that's how the course the, the tiles communicate. Um, so anyway, so we have uh, we have 0 55, if you care, there's a dedicated zero register, dedicated frame, thread, stack, link, statistical <coughs> registers, right? It's very common now when we have 64 new 64 bit architectures that we shove in enough registers that we can just keep one around and say, okay, this will always have syscall numbers in it, or you know, whatever. Um, we're not register starved these days. The next thing they're working on is called Stratton that has 225 cores on a single chip. Um, and they're, they're increasing, right, from this. So, so it's, it's, it's truly scary where this is going, okay? But probably what interests you is, does it run Linux, right? Well, actually, let me, let me just finish a couple points first. Um, so yes, it does SMP. The tiles can collaborate together. Um, there's a cache coherency protocol they implement using uh, packetized communication. There's a hypervisor interface. So what actually runs on the bare metal is the Tilera hypervisor. Um, it does the usual stuff hypervisors do, like page table management. Um, they have some nice features like priority pages. So um, you can actually mark this page is more important than this page. Um, so it can do things like, um, it can factor that into to its use of TLBs or you know, its, its caching decisions. Um, that's quite nice. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the, the wormhole routing they use between tiles is kind of an HPC-inspired thing. It does run Linux. 
Um, the port on Linux began last year. Uh, well, began before that, but the upstreaming into mainline Linux began in 2010. Um, Chris Metcalf is the guy who's driving all of that. Uh, if you go to tylera.com, you can see they've posted a big utils, GCC, you know, standard toolchain components. Um, and one of the interesting things about this, if you go through the entire Git history of Tile, which I've done, because as I said, I'm a I'm a, a architecture junkie, and it's what excites me on Saturday night is to you know go and read through the Git history. I kid you not. Uh, and uh, anyway, so um, Chris worked very closely with Arn Bergman, who has been uh, doing a lot of work on something called ASM Generic, and ASM Generic is a is a basically a reference for anybody doing a new architecture port of Linux. Um, and if you want to see a really smooth, really well done architecture port, look to Tile. It's, it's, it's truly a really good example of how to do things right. Um, so with collaboration with ARMS, it really only took one kernel cycle to go from posting patches to cleaning them up to getting them integrated, which as you know is you know, pretty much unheard of. Um, and the, the final support landed in 2.6.36. Um, it's improved since then. Okay, so the very first posting, yeah, they implemented the basics, right? You could boot Linux, talk to the hypervisor, set things up, let you get a console, a um, couple of network drivers and so forth, right? And a lot of stuff still lived in their own Linux tree and has slowly sort of come in over the last year. But even so, it's only taken really a year to go from initial posting to um, you know, very good support. And if you're interested in, in, in learning more about that, I suggest you, you follow the typical process. Um, you, you start looking in um, arch, tile, uh, kernel, head64.s, um, and proceed from there, half the stack. Um, so, uh, anyone have any questions? Yeah? Are any of the interesting GCC compilation features and optimizations that are now possible that you can have you can follow, say, 64 concurrent <coughs> operations at the same time, then run the code and see what can work faster, and that's the ones that don't accept that implemented in the compiler? Well, so they're using GCC. So yeah. if, if the support's in GCC, um, 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 well, in terms of the individual cores, what it does is think of them as individual processors in an SMP system, right? So it's not earth shattering in that sense. It does use a mesh network to coordinate a lot of things, but from the Linux point of view, it behaves just like a standard SMP system. Um, and in fact, um, what I would think, so the, the very long instruction word format they use, um, you know, it's a three stage pipeline. It, it, they, they, they basically split these deal very long instruction words out into multiple uh, execution units and so forth. Um, there could be some interesting things there if, if someone were playing around with an LLVM on there, for example. That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you're compiling on this, is compiling the kind of speed you would expect given the architecture, or is there something about it that... Is well, I think, I, I think most people are cross-compiling at this point. I mean, it looks very much like, although they could take over the world, and every now and again I read their stuff and I'm thinking, why have you not taken over the world yet? Clearly what you have is more efficient than everything else. But I think the problem they have is, so they recently got some VC funding, right? They got $48 million and they wanted a third of that. But people were just, they're like, no, 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 we want to give you money. Right? <laughs> they don't have any problems with getting money, but they're still targeting like embedded use cases. Like, you How know, are they for power efficiency? Very, very good. Very, very good. I don't have the numbers, but... Phenomenal for core. Yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, I think they do clock gating for core that kind of thing. Linux port currently acts or hypervisor control so you can set the partition and so on. Yes. Yes, and they actually they have a they have a hard wall interface uh, in uh, it's not prompt anymore, I think it's sys now. Very much I've never actually run a tile processor. Some people here uh, one, one one of the guys who has, um, it's they're hard to get, right? <laughs> if they want to give me one, that's great. <laughs> what else comes on? What else runs on it right now? I, I think some proprietary. Um, bear in mind, this is very exciting for people who want to do real time deep packet inspection. Yeah. Right? So I'm sure there's some very exciting stuff that runs on it that we don't know about, right? 
Um, with that, I think I should hand over to, uh, we, we should take the rest later on because we're running a little bit behind. Chris, do you want to come down and we'll just uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the work he and I are doing. Yes, on a single chip, 225. And that's, that's, their goal is to double the number of cores per chip every two years from now on. So, you know, um, Intel, watch out, right? I mean, that's... Basically, more law implemented in cores. Yes, more law implemented in cores, right? <laughs> we, we're going to hand over because we've got only a few minutes left here. So.